Hello, I have decided to do my annotation for my sources uh, that I would use in a classroom via video since three of the four are videos. I thought it was the most appropriate method. Um, the first source that I chose is the only text source and it's by Peggy McIntosh and it is about her invisible knapsack. Or it's been translated as the invisible backpack which are privileges that everybody carries around with them, especially white men and they don't understand these privileges or that they even have them. So they come inside of an invisible knapsack. Um, I chose this because in the classroom, I think it's really important to talk about and to start understanding the privilege that you possess. Um, and she has a great list that I um, copied and put on the blog uh, that I created for the class called Social Studies or Social Study Everything. Um, and it would be the first step of our reflection in the classroom about what privilege is and what it means to us. Um, compared to the other uh, three sources, it is the most straightforward attempt to examine and notify and sort of call out what your privilege actually is. Um, I think it's a very effective way and a very effective resource at doing this. Um, in the blog, uh, I also put that the uh, there are certainly privileges that don't exist here or there are privileges possibly that people have outside of the audience that she was speaking to. So it is uh, appropriate to list those privileges as well. But I think it's a good starting point for the conversation that is carried forward more thoroughly by the other three sources. Um, and I've already sort of touched on the fact that it will help students identify their their um, privilege, which is sort of understanding their power or lack of power. Um, and it, uh, by doing that, it gives us a chance to sort of start thinking about how we can resist um, the, not necessarily the privilege, because there's no guilt to be associated with having the privilege, but resist the lack of other people's, um, I guess, other people's privilege or their um, very visible discontent at or in their life because of the privilege that they don't have. Um, and again, I think this is the first step towards change, understanding who you are and what you have, um, especially when it's something that you cannot understand is very important. So I think that's the first step to change is identifying um, your privilege. The second source is by Tiffany Jana. It was from a TEDx talk that she gave. She's a social activist um, and entrepreneur. And she essentially is a black female living in the South. And I chose this because that's a perspective that probably won't be well represented in my classroom. Uh, there's a chance, but I'll probably teach around Iowa City. And if I'm not in Iowa City, it almost certainly won't be well represented. Um, so it brings a different... Um, Perspective, one, which is always important, and two, I chose it because she talks about the privilege that she does have. Um, she discusses being frustrated by the lack of privilege that exists for her um, or privilege in her life that she noticed other groups, white men, uh, white women. Um, but then she sort of realizes after doing some of her own reflection that uh, she has lots of her own privilege and that it's been very valuable or could be very valuable if um, used properly or in the right way. Um, I think that this is beneficial for the same reason that Macintosh for students is, but in a different way. I think that she's understanding her power and very much her lack of power in the beginning of her sort of struggle and reflection, but then she understands the power that she does have. Um, and the privilege that does exist for her and how she can utilize those tools to sort of move forward in her career and in her life. Um, and this in itself, I think, is resistance. Understanding and reflecting on what you have and then seeing the sort of social injustice that exists and then choosing to do something with it. She talks about opening um, or starting the nonprofit that she runs um, and realizing that she could have done something that was for profit and that she could have had less impact in her mind. Um, but she chose to do something that is the definition of change. She's working in social justice. Um, and I think having this perspective in the classroom is very important and it will help inspire, I think, 
everybody from the teacher, me, down to the students, and obviously she's having an impact on society. The third um, source that I am looking at is by Suhir Hamad. She is a Palestinian-born woman who lives in Brooklyn now. Uh, she's a refugee. Her families were refugees, and she's a poet. Um, the video is of her reading her poetry, which is uh, very powerful because this is a perspective that we have not gotten yet, this global perspective. Um, I think I tend to think, and probably this is one of my privileges, that everything is global to a certain extent without taking into account that it's really not. I live here. I live in a um, relatively white middle-class area. There's not a lot of to speak to Hamid's poetry um, or Hamon's poetry. A lot of strife or war. Um, it's not something that I have to deal with. It's not something that I even think about it, uh, but it was a way of life for her and, and is a way of life for her family. Uh, so this brings... I chose this because it is a completely different idea um, of what reflection is, because her poetry is her reflection. Um, she's literally reflecting what she's seen, um, but it's also the process of writing is and taking the time to actually reflect on what you are thinking and doing. And that's sort of the goal I have for all of these sources is to create reflection and then action. Um, sort of Fieri's modern or not modern, but Fieri's um, mode of practice, this, this idea that you reflect and then take action. And I think that the Macintosh is sort of the pre-reflection or just beginning to reflect, and Jana and Hamad are the two more reflective pieces, and they're beginning to take action, but in our classroom they would be the places where I would be helping the students find space to reflect. And both of these videos would be under, and are under the class blog of reflection. Um, I think in comparison to the others, it offers a global perspective. It also offers a more literary perspective, something that is um, broad um, and can be interpreted in many ways, which will draw out um, from the specific experience of a black woman or a Palestinian woman or a white woman uh, or a white man as the person in front of the classroom it will draw out um, more ideas and uh, more consciousness, I think, because it is a, one global, but also uh, poetry is a little more broad. Um, I think that she identifies her power very clearly in that she does not have very much um, as a person who was fleeing from a country that is very powerless um, because you have very little control over what it is that you're actually doing. Uh, her resistance is poetry writing, and I know that she's also active in other things, but I think that this is something the students can understand. Um, I also think that it relates to change specifically in the classroom because by internalizing and then sort of exporting those feelings into a written work, um, I think that it's impactful to the classroom uh, and society in general, but it shows students that even those tragic, difficult things you can push forward, you can push out. And then you can create um, a sort of newness, a new idea, a new identity. Um, so those would be my two reflective pieces. Uh, Macintosh, I would call pre-reflection. And then the last piece is change. It is by Malala Yousafzai. It is her call to action in front of the UN. Um, it is very powerful because it ticks all of the boxes of what praxis is, I think. Um, I chose it b just for that reason. Um, I also chose it because she's just a powerful speaker um, and her story is worth being told in the classroom. Um, it's different than the other is the other sources in that Malala is sort of the poster child for action for a specific cause, I think, in the world, for education. Uh, generally, but also for women's education um, in the Middle East or in the subcontinent, right? In places where um, education is mandated to wealthy and male. So I think that she brings that also another global perspective, which is very valuable. Um, I think that 
it helps my students understand power, resistance, and change. All three of them sort of wrapped together in one is that there was this, this person who was injured who was standing up for what she wanted to or she was almost killed and then she stood up for um, her rights in education and not just for hers but for everybody's right for to an education and it started out very very locally I think as lots of sort of resistance movements do and then um, she's had this very global impact um, on people and on the world so I think that her as the final piece, the final call to action, and the place where students can sort of go to to formulate their ideas is exactly um, the right place to end. And that is my annotation for the four sources that I created for reflection number one.